A woman can defy conventional stereotypes and go on to be a part of a noble cause such as saving the world. In an era where women barely did anything heroic and were confined to the family and their children's needs, Virginia Hall pioneered a daredevil role of espionage and sabotage. She refused to simply look nice and follow orders as was expected of women at the time. When the hour of France's liberation came in 1944, the secret armies she equipped, trained, and sometimes directed defied expectations and helped bring about complete victory for the Allies. Tilda Sonia Purnell, an American with a wooden leg she called Cuthbert, Virginia was the first Allied woman to be deployed to France in the Second World War. Her love for France pushed her to become a real-life hero who kept going even when all seemed lost. By battling for every inch of recognition and authority she got, Hall was able to rise to the top, and survived an era that broke so many people. Not minding her disability, she went through six years of war in a way that very few people did. Virginia did all that she could to defeat the Nazis and liberate France. This summary reveals how one woman turned the tide of history. It shows how terrible times can end in triumph and how women can break glass ceilings regardless of how high they are. So, whether you're reading to know more about history or learn about Virginia Hall, you're in for an unforgettable experience. From an early age, Virginia Hall was adventurous and refused to put her dreams away for marriage or anything else. Virginia Hall was the only daughter and youngest child of Barbara Hall and Edward Lee. Born in 1906, her mother had her life planned out. She wanted her to marry a wealthy suitor who would help them become wealthy again. They lived in a modest house in Maryland that had no central heating or running water because her father had squandered all his inheritance and could barely provide for his family. Barbara Hall sent her to a fancy school so she could meet wealthy people, but this was so unsuitable for Virginia who was more at peace when she was hunting or going on some adventure. At the age of 19, she was engaged to marry but ended up breaking it off because he cheated and had a sense of entitlement. Hall channeled her ambition into her career and found a job as a secretary since few options were available to her. Her mother neither understood her passion for adventure nor her desire to study so much. She went on to spend seven years studying at five universities and trying, by all means possible, to prove herself an equal in a masculine world. For the longest time, Virginia couldn't get a job because the State Department was unwilling to welcome women into their ranks. In 1926, she moved to France to study and spent her days learning from so many people. On her return home, she was armed with a degree and a strong belief in female emancipation. She also learned to speak French, German, Spanish, Italian, and Russian and was well-versed in geography and politics. Virginia Hall decided to get a job, and after seven months of applying, she became a clerk in the American Embassy in Warsaw, Poland. She decided to ask to be transferred to Turkey, where she hoped to explore more of the world. Soon after she arrived in Turkey in 1933, she organized snipe shooting expeditions with friends. On one of those occasions, she fell, and her gun rained bullets in her left foot. Due to an infection, her leg had to be cut off. She recovered after a long time in the hospital and soon went back to work but had to use a wooden leg which she called Cuthbert. She applied to be a diplomat again but got rejected due to a rule barring amputees from diplomacy. Within a year, she was posted to Estonia, and on September 1, 1939, Germany launched an attack on Poland, and two days later, Britain and France declared war. Virginia left for Metz, northeast of France, and signed up to drive ambulances since she had a driver's license and it was open to women and foreigners. She was chosen and given a course in first aid. Virginia knew that she wanted more than anything to help her beloved France reject the acquiescence of its rulers and fight to reclaim its old freedom. Tilda Sonia Purnell. The struggle against Nazi Germany was a difficult one and people formed the resistance, a campaign against Hitler's army, the Wehrmacht. In May 1940, Germany attacked France, and in the chaos that followed, she was determined to help France fight for their freedom. Did you know? During the Second World War, the U.S. service employed 1,500 diplomatic officers, and only six of them were female. Virginia Hall became the first female agent of the French task force by sheer bravery and unrivaled determination. Germany attacked France through a forested area in the north and divided the country into two zones, an occupation zone in the north and west and a free zone in the south. The latter was to be ruled by a regime headed by Marshal Payton. Virginia Hall decided to go back to Britain through the Maginot Line, a series of fortifications along the German border. In the meantime, and on her way, she met with a British undercover agent named George Bellows. They spoke for a while, and Bellows was intrigued by her courage. He gave her a number to call once she got to Britain and assured her of a job. The number belonged to Nicholas Bodington, a senior officer in the independent French section of a new and controversial British Secret Service, also known as the Special Operations Executive. Winston Churchill ordered that the SOE, Special Operations Executive, agents support the French nation. Bellows believed that Virginia would be a great addition to the SOE, hence, his urging her to call Bodington. Virginia learned how to be different people at different times. This was how she escaped being killed by the German troops and other enemies. Tilda Sonia Purnell. Upon Virginia's arrival in London, she presented herself at the American Embassy and asked for a temporary job. She became a secretary again, and after a while, she decided to go back home but was told it was too late to get a ticket. 
stuck in London, she called Bodington, who on listening to her tales of bravery in France, was pleased to have her in the SOE and had her join the F section, the SOE's France task force. She moved to Lyon, France's third largest city and became the first female agent and liaison officer and was tasked with coordinating the work of local resistance leaders and future SOE agents. The odds were so many and against her because nobody knew what to expect from the war. There were a lot of dangers, the secret German police, the Gestapo, and its military counterpart, the Abwehr. The service had also failed in its previous missions. Many people backed out of the service because of the fear of what was to come. At this point, ten people were left in training and Virginia was the only woman and the only one with a disability. Virginia didn't allow herself to be defined by her disability. Instead, she was eager to take on new roles. However, there were obstacles as she was both a woman and an American. The SOE mainly recruited men who were British citizens, so having Virginia on the team was cause for worry. In the end, she was able to convince them that she was on their side. She was given orders to generally report on operating conditions and trained for a few days in a heavily guarded house. Virginia was taught the basics of coding and warfare security, how to use cover names and look ordinary even when on a mission. She was briefed on when she could exercise her license to kill and was given different pills that could be useful for this intent. On August 23, 1941, she began her journey as an SOE agent in France. To avoid being noticed, she presented herself as a journalist and was able to sell this identity. Virginia's first mission, codenamed Operation Geologist 5, exposed her to fear and the likelihood of a painful death and many people did not expect her to survive it. Virginia Hall took networking very seriously and surrounded herself with people who had different skills. Virginia had a natural talent for spying. She was able to get information from the French officials when she needed it. She got the assistance of nuns when she arrived in the city with nobody to help her. Virginia created a secure and disciplined system of small, discreet cells of hand-picked members that were prepared to follow orders and understood the penalty for careless behavior. The British were not trusted in France. They were seen as weak people who caused problems for France because of the news that flooded the media. Virginia was introduced to Germaine Guerin, a brothel owner who was also determined to help in any way possible. Germaine agreed to convert parts of her brothel into safe houses for the agents. These became useful to SOE agents coming through the city or fleeing from danger zones. The prostitutes that worked in the brothel spiked their clients' drinks to gain information that helped their mission. By sharing her feelings about the war and a burning desire for a free France, Virginia was able to recruit more people to join the SOE. She refused to take sides and was interested only in people who put the war first. She visited lawyers, farmers, and hoteliers to get information, rooms, and food for injured soldiers. She made friends with a Greek restaurant owner with access to black market cigarettes, macaroni, dozens of porters, shop assistants, and workers. She kept writing articles for the New York Post to keep her cover and continue with her job as a liaison officer. There was barely an hour in the day, let alone days in the week, when she was not working to retrieve lost ground and reboot the whole French operation. Tilda Sonia Purnell. Did you know? Poland was the first country Hitler conquered in the Second World War. Virginia Hall could not resist the urge to help everyone she met. This quality endeared her to people and helped her get the things she needed. Due to the attack by Japanese bombers on the U.S. Navy base, a war had begun. America was now against Japan, Germany, and Italy. Virginia knew they were in danger even if France was nominally neutral in these attacks. The French media opposed the Anglo-American alliance. They also ensured that the information released did not reveal that they were in support of the German war effort. Despite this, Virginia refused to leave France and assured the New York Post of her safety. One February afternoon, a man named Ben Cowburn showed up at her door to inform her that as a result of a disastrous betrayal by a female double agent, Virginia's whereabouts and existence were known to the Germans and it was only a matter of time before they found her. But despite this news, Virginia decided to stay put in France since her work was not done. The fact that the Germans were onto her made her more determined to prove her worth by evading them. Virginia's team established her as the eyes and ears of the Allies across France and even though this put her in grave danger, she enjoyed her job. By June 1942, Virginia's apartment had become the meeting point for all the agents in France, and she took incredible risks by recruiting many people to the cause. She changed her field name from Marie to Isabel and later to Philomene. She took care to vary her roots home, change her daily routine and frequently alter her appearance to avoid getting ambushed. But these could not afford her protection forever. She eventually had to change houses and upper security. She provided the agents with contacts, washed and donated supplies to them and even distributed cash to the families of prisoners. When people asked for help, Virginia found the greatest pleasure in giving it. No task was too great or too small for her, and whatever she undertook, she put into it all her energy, sparing herself nothing. Tilda Jerry Morrill. The Germans made mass arrests of resistance, French people who didn't support the Nazis, and tortured them to extract more names. Virginia's acts saved the SOE, a lot of times, from being wiped out as she was quick to act whenever danger arose. Virginia Hall saved 12 top SOE agents from the Germans by acting on her instincts and masterminding a difficult escape.
A British agent was discovered by German soldiers, and they found a clue that led to the French safe house called Villa des Bois. They went on to set a trap and captured 12 SOE agents. These agents were left to rot for about six months in prison, in southwest France. They were not allowed freedom or any luxury. Gabby Bloch, wife of former French deputy Jean-Pierre, Bloch, on her husband's request, asked Virginia for help. They believed her to be their last hope, and she did not hesitate to draw up a plan for them to come out of the prison officially or unofficially. On March 14, a telegram announced that the prisoners were to be moved to the confines of an internment camp where their fate would remain uncertain. She planned to rescue them during the transfer but figured they'd be too weak to run, so she had to wait. While Gabby and Virginia smuggled useful items to them, the prisoners also planned their escape. One guard, José Sevilla, helped them in return for passage to England to join the government in exile led by Charles de Gaulle. Many of our men owe their liberty and even their lives to Virginia Hall. Tilde SOE internal memorandum. Finally, they did escape after careful planning and practice and hid in a barn for two weeks. SOE put Virginia forward for one of Britain's highest civilian honors and praised her for her help. The successful release of the prisoners caused Adolf Hitler to unleash a brutal lockdown on France. He made it clear that France was now a significant threat and ordered that the German soldiers track down those responsible for their release. Virginia was unaware of these plans that were aimed at her and continued to help people around her. Her success paved the way for more female agents. In 1942, most people believed Germany was winning the war, and everyone had to be prepared. Virginia sensed she was being watched and realized that they were all in danger. After a couple of people had been arrested, she was ordered to isolate herself. She took precautions and was slow to trust, avoided compromising relationships and chose to stay in hotels with multiple exits. There were so many dangers surrounding Virginia's daily routine. She lived carefully because one slip could ruin the mission for herself and her team. On August 4, Abbe Robert Alesh, a young priest, brought a message for Virginia through the rooms of one of her most trusted confidants, Dr. Jean Rousset, and was insistent on seeing her. He expressed concern for her safety and convinced her that he was indeed on her side. The fact that Alesh was a priest and denounced the Germans calmed Virginia's doubts. It was a mistake to trust Alesh as he lied about everything and was a German spy. He kept providing Virginia with false information, and she kept sending him money and revealing the modes of operation to him. Through the information that Alesh fed them, the Germans were able to infiltrate her network, break and intercept her messages, and were aware of all her plans. The dangers of the war made Virginia Hall flee to Spain on foot. To survive, she had to make that difficult decision. Due to the many arrests that the Germans were making, Virginia decided to leave before they finally took over. On September 21, she asked permission to leave but cancelled at the last minute to stay and secure a few people's releases from prison. The plan to do so was heavily intercepted by the Germans who planned to capture her, so she had to leave for the south of France. She was called a dangerous spy, and there was a substantial reward for anyone who would find her. She decided to go on foot to Spain through the icy paths of the Massif du Canigou mountain range. Virginia hired a passeur, a hard, bitten local smuggler, as a guide. She was careful to hide Cuthbert, her wooden prosthetic. By the time she reached 6,000 feet, she was in agonizing pain, and her sock was filled with blood. Back in France, Alesh was back to look for Virginia. He stole properties and tortured her helpers to get information about her. Their courage in transmitting in such conditions kept whole circuits alive, a fact for which they were too often paying with their deaths. Tilda Sonia Purnell. Meanwhile, in Spain, Virginia was arrested. She sent a coded letter, through a prostitute who was released, to the American consulate disclosing her location and demanding urgent action to secure her release. They were quick to react, and she was released on parole. As soon as she got out, she asked the New York Post for money to travel to England and also asked them to facilitate the release of the other prisoners. While in London, she was distraught by the news of all who had been arrested and kept wondering if they'd have been safer had she not recruited them. She knew she had to fight for them. With the Germans' preoccupation with southern France, everything changed. People were killed for harboring agents, and sporadic fighting broke out between the supporters of different groups. France was now a dangerous place to live. But despite all the bloodshed, the SOE was demonstrating remarkable resilience due to the large part that Virginia played in their recruitment and organization. They were trained to be professional agents and were assessed by psychologists. In 1943, Virginia got to Madrid under the guise of a foreign correspondent for the Chicago Times. She stayed for four months in the uneventful job and decided to quit. The months following Virginia's mountain escape were quite difficult for her. Her SOE bosses refused to allow her back into active service and gave her a menial job organizing safe houses in Spain. Her pay was reduced to the level of an embassy typist. Although Virginia had risked everything, she didn't feel happy about it all. Many times, Virginia's messages for help were misunderstood, and she had to face the struggle alone. Through these, she never quit. Through the dangers of the war, people looked up to Virginia Hall for strength because she defied all odds and always did the bravest things. The United States had established a counterpart to the SOE, in 1942, called the Office of Strategic Services or OSS. Since then, it had operated in the shadows of the SOE. William Donovan, the London-based director of OSS, wanted to change that. 
He seized an opportunity to boost his agency's credibility by infiltrating France and sabotaging Germany's defensive preparations. And he wanted Virginia Hall to be a part of this operation. She agreed and changed her employer. In 1944, Virginia and a man named Henri Lasso were deposited on a beach in Brittany. Her appearance had been altered to look like a much older peasant woman named Marcel Montagna. She was supposed to find safe houses for other agents and wireless operators who were on the run, in central France. She was also to assist Lasso since it was controversial to send a woman on a paramilitary operation and even more so to put her in charge. Virginia gathered information on German troops by offering to help farmers make cheese which she sold to a small German convoy so she could listen to their conversations. One day, the Germans raided her house, but found nothing. She could tell nobody about this for fear of being discovered and had to move base. She begged Lasso's landlady to go with her and do the talking in public while they traveled so that her accent won't be discovered. On getting to the home of Colonel Bessereau, a retired assistant to the former Prime Minister of France, Edouard Deladier, Virginia trained his men. Things were getting worse, and time was running out, more people were getting killed, and Virginia sensed the imminent danger. She journeyed to the south of France on orders received from London to inspect the people that the local Maquis described as a trustworthy group of disciplined men who were ready to take military orders. She introduced herself as a Belgian journalist reporting on the conditions for children in France. Her inquiries led to them consulting one of the local chiefs, Pierre Fail. Virginia provided Fail's men with arms, explosives, money, and food. She spent hours sending and receiving radio messages and coding and decoding them using the latest encryption technique. She also bought bicycles for herself and her team so they could ride to drop zones and wait for deliveries from London. Her meticulously researched operations were more successful, and 18 of Virginia's men launched a highly successful attack on 135 German soldiers, killing 14, and destroying several trucks without casualties on the French side. On another occasion, they destroyed a German truck full of troops and seized their valuables. Virginia was promoted to first lieutenant. She directed more attacks, and under her direction, they cut the phone lines to reinforce the impression that they were under siege. After a long five-day battle, the area was cleared of Germans. The French were able to save themselves because of her. There is too much stress on grandiloquent plans, too many words and far too little work. Let us work for our freedom. Tilda Virginia Hall. Virginia Hall embraced any challenge as long as it guaranteed the freedom of France. Her patriotism was exemplary. In 1944, two American agents, Lieutenants Henry Riley and Paul Goylet, were sent as backup and were surprised at the work that Virginia had done. She told them of the realities on ground and explained that they were a little late since they had already conquered the Germans in that area. But then, she was permitted to help liberate other regions of France and gathered her most loyal men to help her do this. They were drilled by Riley and Goylet and made sure that all their weapons were in good condition. They fought long and hard against the Germans. Virginia returned to the United States in September 1945 and felt like a stranger in her own country. It took time to bounce back after years of stress and endurance. It was on one of these days that she knew she was in love with Paul, much to her mother's disappointment. He was eventually cast off a few days later when the president ordered that all special services be disbanded. Finding work wasn't easy, and the thought of taking orders in the U.S. Army was depressing. Friends suggested she publish a book, but she didn't think that it mattered much. In 1946, the Central Intelligence Group was created, and she started angling for a job. She was finally successful and became one of the first women to join the Central Intelligence Agency. Everywhere she went, she was recognized for her bravery and strength. Her determination to see things to completion and her passion for the people who in turn, loved her even more. Virginia was dispatched to Italy because she spoke the Italian language fluently. Since her work was desk-bound and Paul refused to join her in Italy, she resigned. Money was never a motivation for Virginia to stay on a job. If the situation didn't take her to the field, she quit. In 1950, she moved to New York to stay with Paul. She also started work as an administrative assistant at the National Committee for Free Europe, a CIA front organization. In 1951, after a series of tests and interviews, she was admitted into the CIA headquarters. She enjoyed her work as she was responsible for overseeing recruitment and training of potential guerrilla units as well as directing secret operations and organizing escape lines. Her exceptional experience was finally being put to good use by her superior, Frank Wisner. Within a year, she became the first woman operations officer in the entire covert action arm of the CIA. In 1957, she got married to Paul and decided to spend the rest of her days at home. But as much of a strong woman as she was, she couldn't help her failing health and eventually died at the age of 76. The tensions, the endless nightmares of uncertainty, the strains, and fatigue are the agent's responsibility to accept and control. They are never fully conquered. Tilda Virginia Hall. Conclusion. Virginia Hall didn't just survive the wartime years under constant threat of capture, torture and death. She also played a crucial role in recruiting large networks of resistance fighters and directing their assistance to the Allied invasion. This is the truth. Tilda Sonia Purnell. For six years, Virginia worked hard to keep France safe through the attacks from the Nazis.
Even though France was not her home country, her experience during her first visit to Paris made an impression big enough for her to fall in love with the entire people. Through the many escapes and close shaves, she managed to keep it all together despite her disability. She rescued agents, fed them, took risks, and made difficult decisions just to save the people she loved dearly. Although she did not receive the recognition she deserved during her years at the CIA, at the end of her life, more people came to understand her legacy and her pivotal role in building up the French armies against the Nazis. Anyone can make a change if they genuinely want to. As Virginia Hall has shown, the odds may not be in your favor, but through persistence and determination, nothing looks so difficult anymore. Try this, make a list of the difficult tasks or decisions that you've been putting off. Seek help from family and friends and make a plan to keep you focused on your goal.